No, I don't. I don't see you at all. It's, It's a little bit after one. We'll go ahead and get started. I've got some folks that will be coming in that, that we are at. Um, well, after we had the last meeting, uh, Wayne and I had got together. Wayne called me and asked me and said, hey, I think I'm going to reach out and see if we can get Dan Scott to come and do the same presentation he did for the Four Corners of Marriage Management meeting. And so Wayne reached out to Dan and Dan agreed to come and he's here with us today. And so he's going to talk about the Eclipse of the Eclipse, what it will mean, and why this thing is such a huge, a huge deal. Uh, so, without further ado, I'll, I'll send it over to Dan and let him have at it. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, super excited to be here. Love talking about total solar eclipses. And I, I know probably some of you are like, okay, so what is the big deal with the total solar eclipse? How many of you have ever seen a total solar eclipse before. You have. So you know how awesome it is. Which one did you see, sir? Okay, okay. So that was the one that uh, there was uh, April, uh, it was uh, August 21st, 2017, right? Oh, more. Oh, you were with the annular eclipse. Okay. So there was an annular eclipse that occurred. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the difference between the two. The annual eclipse is cool, but a total solar eclipse is 10,000 times better than an annual eclipse. And you're just like, oh, really? So my name is Dan Scoff. I'm the chief meteorologist of KNWA and Fox 24. And I'm so excited to speak to the Choctaw Nation about the total solar eclipse that's coming in April 8th of 2024. I hope you took the day off if you aren't working or if you are working and you're in the path of totality, then you're good to go. But uh, we're going to cover a lot of things about this total solar eclipse. First of all, why a total solar eclipse is an amazing celestial event. We're going to look back at past solar eclipses, including the reason why I'm so passionate about total solar eclipses. And you're going to see some video of total solar eclipses. Not only that, you're going to learn why they occur, how they occur, and also the difference between totality or busting as I like to call it. Predicting eclipses, which we can do to some extent, and I'll have more on that in just a bit. And of course, what you can expect and when. Timing is a big thing. The time frame uh, for the eclipse, how long it is, how long it lasts, we'll cover all that. And finally, totality or bust. Why you need to be in the moon's shadow. And uh, it really is a unique event, unlike any other thing you've ever experienced before in your life. And we're going to take a look at detailed maps of totality. If you're wondering where is totality, how can I check if I'm in the path of totality, we'll be able to do all that. And then finally we'll close it out with safe viewing of the total solar eclipse because uh, that's really important. And for any of you that have questions and answers, we can go ahead and cover that. So first of all, I remember seeing my first total solar eclipse. It was July 11th, 1991. Now this is before social media. This is before all of the TikTok streams and all that stuff. This is before everything that uh, was on social media. I don't even, I mean, cell phones were there, but I think there were razor flip phones. <laughs> that was about it. So you aren't getting great pictures from a phone on an eclipse. Um, 1991, my stepfather came to me and said, we're going to go take a cruise and we're going to see 
something that you will never see again in your life. And I was like, come on, whatever, 91. I was like, we'll see something like this again. He's right. This total solar eclipse that we saw just to the east of Baja, Mexico, in uh, the Sea of Cortez, totality lasted 6 minutes 55 seconds. That is an extremely long totality. The totality that's happening on April 8, 2024 is just over 4 minutes. So we'll show you why totality can be longer and shorter on some of them, but this was an incredible eclipse. We were located right here, right on the center line. This was an eclipse where astronomers got on this special cruise, and I, I'm a huge science geek, I'm a huge science buff, I love astronomy, that's what my stepfather got me into this, and when we saw this total solar eclipse, it was astounding, it was life-changing, and I'm like, I'm not missing another total solar eclipse as long as I live. Um, now granted, to some extent, South, uh, you know, South Antarctica, you know, stuff like that, I'm like, yeah, that eclipse can happen, I'm all right. We got Antarctica outside, basically, so we don't have to travel very far. But So you've seen an eclipse. A lot of other people didn't raise their hand, which is good, because some people are like, yeah, I think I've seen an eclipse. I'm not sure or not. If, if you're not sure or not if you saw one, you didn't. I can promise you that. Because then it's an incredible thing, and believe me, the hype is very real. This is why... As emergency managers know, an estimated 1.5 million extra people are potentially coming to Arkansas. Arkansas has the path going right through the natural state. So the eclipse of the century, July 11th, 1991, I'm going to show you a video. Now this guy is very animated, but it's worth the hype. So this was uh, some video, and keep in mind, 91, the video quality isn't the best. Uh, but we'll take a look at the July 11th, 1991 total solar eclipse. The video gets better, I promise, but... Uh, This is my favorite one, the Icarumba. Listen to this one. <laughs> so here's what he's seeing. He's seeing the corona of the sun. You can't see it at any other time unless a total solar eclipse. These are solar flares that are shooting off the sun. You can see that with your eyes without eclipse glasses. You can take the eclipse glasses off. You can look at them with your own eyes and also there's a thing called Bailey's beads. We'll cover that. There's a thing called the diamond ring effect. There's also a 360 degree sunset around the sky at the same time. You don't get that in the sunset or sunrise. It's an absolute incredible thing. You can also see planets, daytime planets. Yeah, it gets that dark. It's, uh, it's astounding. Now, some of you might have been here in Arkansas for the uh, August 21st, 2017 eclipse. We were clouded over for the uh, annular eclipse, um, so we only had a partial eclipse here. But it really does matter where you're at, and that's probably the most education that we have to do about a total solar eclipse. So they're pretty spectacular. That was an incredible one. I didn't go through all the totality because it's 6 minutes, 55 seconds of it, but there's different stages of what the corona looks like. That diamond ring is spectacular. It really is an incredible thing. So the last one that was nearby was August 21st, 2017. And when I saw this eclipse in southwest Missouri, oddly enough, I'm a storm chaser, and this time I was chasing clear sky instead of clouds and storms. It was a very unique experience, but it was still a spectacular show in Missouri. 
Now this, thankfully, the camera technology has gotten a little bit better. This is a video from my friend Charles Peak, who's a uh, storm spotter for the Weather Channel, and he got some incredible video of this eclipse. Now I want you to listen, because you'll hear crickets chirping in the middle of the day when this eclipse occurs. You can see the difference in camera technology over the years. Now that's still with a shade and eclipse glasses. Take it off. Now the eclipse in 2017 was a little shorter. It was only 2 minutes 20 seconds. But look, here's a planet. Here are the crickets. Listen how calm everything got. And you hear, it's not just hoot and holler and I carumba guy that was going crazy. You can hear the, the crowd in the background. You'll be doing the same thing. You'll be overtaken how awesome it is. So you get to see the sun's corona. It's the outer atmosphere of the sun. It can only happen during a total solar eclipse when the moon is perfectly covering up the sun. On this one, you don't see the solar prominences as much because in 91, the sun was in what's called a solar maximum and the solar activity was a lot greater. This was actually close to a solar minimum in 2017. So there isn't as many solar flares that were happening um, but you will get to see the diamond ring effect here in just a bit because this video will go through the entire eclipse because it is fairly short. But it just kind of gets really quiet, really still. The animals don't know what's going on. It gets cooler. The temperature drops because the sun's getting covered up. Think of it like a cloud when a cloud covers up the sun and it gets a lot cooler. So that's essentially what we're having right here. Now, as the moon starts moving away from the sun, you'll get that bright spot as you get to see the rest of the corona. And it's about to occur right here. You can kind of see it starting to brighten up. And it's called the diamond ring effect. And actually, it's going to occur on this side, I think, is when it because the moon's moving from right to left, as you saw the way the eclipse started to appear. In 91, we saw four daytime planets. Uh, Mercury, which you can't really see because it's so close to the sun. Um, Venus in the sky, in the, because typically you see that when the sun sets and the sun's below the horizon, and then you see Venus setting below the horizon. And then Jupiter and Saturn were also in there. It was, it was pretty spectacular. Here's the diamond ring. And so there you get to see it. It, it, looks, it looks pretty spectacular, too, when you're looking at it with, uh, with your eyes. Now, you have to wear the eclipse glasses at that point. So. so that was the eclipse path. And it was only between those blue lines that the sky went dark. So if people were in Springfield, northwest Arkansas, I heard a lot of people say, I don't know why you talked all about this total solar eclipse. I was here in northwest Arkansas. I saw it. It was okay. It wasn't that cool. It was because you missed it. <laughs> you weren't in the path. There is a difference. It's not like a, a sporting event where you can go to uh, the stadium and you might have a better seat than others, but you still get to watch the game. Not with a total solar eclipse if you're not in the path. And so you're probably thinking, well, I wonder if I'm in the path in, in uh, this year, 2024. Before we get to that, though, we've got to talk about why total solar eclipses occur. Probably some of you know this is like fifth grade you know, science, but we're talking about the moon gets in between the sun and the earth, and the moon's shadow is what covers up the sun. So a total solar eclipse is when it's smack dab in the center. Partial eclipse is when it's just a little bit off. And the annular eclipse, which is what you saw, is when the moon is a little farther away from the Earth. So what happens is, is it doesn't completely cover up the, the sun perfectly. So you see that ring of fire. Now you know I had to wear the eclipse glasses the whole time. But it really is a, quite a different experience from an annular to a, 
to a total. So it's a new moon. That's called a new moon phase. And the moon's shadow is very small compared to the Earth. So it's only a small sliver. It's that totality. It's the moon's shadow where the eclipse becomes uh, totality. So again, you experience that solar eclipse when the moon's shadow passes over you. Now, it's interesting. Some people think they're going to watch the eclipse in Arkansas and then drive northeast at the moon's shadow is moving at like 1,500 miles an hour. <laughs> you can't even really honestly take a plane that fast and, and uh, follow the moon's shadow. So the solar eclipses only occur at a new moon. And I saw there's some TikToks that are on out there now, and they're talking about how the moon disappears. And it's like, it's called a new moon, and it happens every 29 and a half days. <laughs> it's, it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing here. How many of you, did you, any of you see that TikTok about the moon disappearing? Like, I can't believe the moon is disappearing. So, anyways, this is the path of the annular eclipse. And as you mentioned, you were in Texas, right? Uh, Roswell. Roswell. Oh, did you get to see any UFOs? <laughs> you went to the UFO museum or the, the, the Roswell, New Mexico. So there's the path of the annular eclipse. That may be a good spot in southwest Texas. We'll talk more about that with cloud cover. But um, so I want to show you a video. This is a, I love this video. There's a lot of videos that are out there, but I think this is my favorite video on an eclipse to scale. I'd like to see an eclipse. Well, I think I would have helped call it to see any lately. You know why we have eclipses? Oh, sure. It's uh... Well, uh, 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 I don't have to say another word. Show how it occurred. This is the Earth and Moon to scale. If the Earth were this big, the Moon would be this big and this far apart. But to make eclipses happen, you need a star. Our Sun is 400 times the diameter of our Moon. But it's also about 400 times as far away. So why are eclipses so rare? Well, our moon doesn't orbit in the same plane as the Earth and Sun. Its orbit is tilted. This means that the moon only crosses the plane at two places. We call these places nodes. Most of the time, nodes aren't lined up with the Sun. But over the course of the year, eventually, they do. It's only when the three bodies are in a straight line that an eclipse can occur. If the moon happens to be behind our planet, our shadow will fall on it, tinged red by every sunset on Earth. This is a lunar eclipse. If, however, the moon happens to be at the other node, between us and the sun, its shadow will fall on us. This is a solar eclipse. So now you know how eclipses happen. And now you're ready to see one. I remember too, in 2017, the eclipse happened. I'm like, man, we got to wait another seven years. We're almost there. We're only a few months away. And so I know the planning has, uh, you know, the planning began a year, a year and a half ago for um, the influx of people. So to sum up, the sun is about 400 times bigger than our moon, but it's also 400 times farther away. So it matches up perfectly at the time when the moon is big enough uh, in appearance and close enough to the earth where it covers up the entire um, sun, you get the total solar eclipse. So I think you get the idea there. We can predict eclipses. We know exactly where they're going to occur. Mathematical formulas, Kepler's laws, all that stuff with the equations of uh, the planets in motion. It's pretty incredible how mathematically sound it is. <clears throat> but there's our eclipse right there, 2024, April 8th, crossing over the United States again, starting all the way in the Central Pacific and then racing across to, uh, Mexico as well as uh, southwest Texas and then Arkansas, and we'll go through the path again. So the next one, there it is, April 8, 2024. There's a little bit of a zoomed out view of the totality line. 
And so Northwest Arkansas, this is it. Fort Smith misses it by that much. And we'll have more on that. But totality does run through Arkansas and it runs through the entire state and that's why people are excited, especially in Arkansas, about the eclipse. Here's a more zoomed in view. It also runs through southeast Oklahoma, which is why we're here talking to you guys, the Choctaw Nation. And it does run through LaFleur County. Now the interesting thing with an eclipse is it depends on where you're at because your experience won't be the same everywhere. If you're right on the totality line, you get the maximum eclipse because the full width of the moon's shadow goes over you. If you're on the fringes or on the outer edges, you may get only two or three minutes of totality. It's significantly less. But there are advantages to being on the edge as well. So let's do an animation here to show you the speed of the moon's shadow is about 1,600 miles per hour. I was talking to this guy over the, over the holidays, and he says, I'm just going to get in a plane, I'm going to follow it. I'm going to be like, good luck on that. Unless you have an F-18 jet or something like that, and you're going Mach 2, you're not going to be able to do that. And he goes, ah, I'll do it. And I was like, all right, you'll find out. Um, but anyways, here's a look at uh, the timing. So here it is running through Texas. There's southeast Oklahoma. Notice the time. The total eclipse begins at about 145. There's the moon's shadow going across. So right about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, this eclipse occurs. There's the duration of totality, meaning if you're right in the center. See how it's getting less and less? That's because of the way the, the shadow is elongated and all that fun stuff. There's the width of the path of totality, 115 miles. There it is going through Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, and it just continues to keep going northeast. But I wanted to show that as a little animation to let you know what that's going to look like time-wise. So the path of totality, there you go through LaFleur County. Not all of LaFleur County. Spiro, uh, several areas, Roland, Salisaw, that's Sequoia County anyways. But LaFleur County, not all of it's going to see it. We'll get a zoomed in view here in just a bit, but uh, it does go right through Little Rock. So there's a lot of big population areas that do get it. Here's a look at Yell County, Logan County is in the heart of it. A lot of people are asking, where are you going to watch the eclipse? Well, it all depends on the cloud cover, which we'll talk more about in just a bit. But uh, I think a great location would be right here on Mount Magazine where you're looking off to the southwest, you can actually see the shadow coming your way because you might be high enough. And it, it'll be like a wave, almost like a dark cloud rolling in. Here's a look at north central Arkansas, northeast Arkansas. There are eclipse watch parties all over the place. So here's a view of southwest Arkansas, De Queen, Wicks, Umpire, Hatfield, Mena, all those areas right in the path close to the totality line. Mount Ida would be another good place. Mount Nebo would be another good place. And you don't even really have to get on a mountain, but it's just a, it's a neat experience to see that shadow. So there's Poto. Poto, right smack dab in the uh, totality area. Not quite in the middle of it, but on the edge. Worcester is also there. Um, you got West Hartford, so some of those areas. Tallahena, Octavia, all those stuff and um, in southern LaFleur County is there. Some of those, the Washita Mountains is going to be a good spot to go see it. There's a look at it continuing northeast. A lot of places are focusing on Russellville. I think NASA's going there. The Weather Channel's going there. And it continues northeast. And so there's your path of totality. And then continuing uh, Van Buren. I zoomed in there because we had uh, Van Buren County Office of Emergency Management at um, the um, Arkansas Association of Counties presentation that I gave. So, want to see the totality path? Here is a website. And uh, someone showed me QR me, which is something I'm going to add on my phone to add a contact. So thanks, Dennis, for that. I got a QR code here for you. I want you to scan that with your phone. That will take you to this website called Time and Date, and then all you have to do is plug in your address, and it'll tell you the totality, it'll tell you the time, 
It'll tell you the duration of totality, all that stuff. And if you don't want to scan the QR code, you can just Google it, time and date, um, and type in April 8th, 2024 eclipse. But I really do, there's a lot of sites that are out there. Some of them are very clunky to use. This one's very easy, so it's, uh, it's really good. And I can leave that up at the end of the presentation if you want to look. And so let me know if you want me to hold on for a little bit. We're good? Okay, we're all good. So what can you expect in the path of totality? Let's just say Russellville. I'm just pointing out Russellville because these times are going to adjust a little bit. So a little more education. We talked about four minutes, 20 seconds of totality, just about. But the duration of the event actually lasts a long time because it doesn't just immediately go total solar eclipse. It takes a while for the moon to go in front of the sun entirely. So the duration of the entire event is two hours, 37 minutes, 43 seconds to be exact. So just under three hours. That's kind of surprising. I'm like, oh boy, I didn't even think about that. The duration of totality is a little less. That's, that's the sweet spot, though. That's the climax of the event, is totality. Partial begins at 1232. You're not going to notice much at all, unless you have eclipse glasses. The deeper you get into the partial eclipse, kind of the grayish it's going to turn outside. Um, you're going to see some crescents on the, on the ground, which are kind of cool. Then you get the full totality. This is where, when you're leading up to that point, this is where the anticipation starts building. So at 1.49.51, so just before 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This is where you get to see Bailey's beads, diamond ring, corona prominences. So a couple things about Bailey's beads. What Bailey's beads are is because the moon has really rough and rugged terrain, you got big mountains and you got deep valleys. And so when the moon is coming and go, going in front of the sun, those big, large peaks block out the sun, but the valleys allow the sunlight to shine through. So it almost looks like beads moving across the edge of the surface of the sun, but it's really the terrain of the moon that's causing that. Really a, ph a phenomenal thing, and uh, it's pretty incredible to see. The diamond ring is where it's just about to become total or just after totality, and, uh, it's, and you can see it in the sky, it's, it's incredible. Corona, you, we've already mentioned that. And those solar prominences, that's probably one of the things that blew my mind the most when I saw this, is you can, because when you look at the sun on any given day, you don't want to look at the sun anyways, because it's very dangerous. If you have eclipse glasses, you can't see the solar prominences because the eclipse glasses filter out almost all the light except for just seeing a little orange glow, glow in the sky so you can see those prominences with your eyes it's a pretty amazing thing reminding you that our sun is a star that's flaming and burning and and shooting off these coronal mass ejections which cause the northern lights and all that stuff so uh, prominences uh, corona those are the those are the things and the maximum eclipse just before uh, 152. Now remember, this is all for Russellville. The time might adjust by a few seconds here and there. And then the full eclipse ends at 154. And then guess what? You've got the partial ending at 310. From here to here, you know, it's like, don't worry about it. This is what's going to happen. This is the time of emergency managers. This is the time that's most important because everybody saw the show. It was incredible. They're talking about it, but guess what? They're packing up. They're not taking pick, except for the real true astronomers that want to get the full eclipse. Most of the people, about 90%, are going to leave at around 2 o'clock. So now you got 1.5 million people that are wanting to leave because it's over. It's done. That's when the issues are going to occur, in my opinion. So times are going to uh, vary based on your exact location. What do you see in northwest Arkansas? You'll see more than this. This is an example of a partial eclipse, but it's only partial in northwest Arkansas. It's only partial in most of the river valley. Um, that's uh, for Crawford County. Um, mo in fact, I think all of Crawford County is really 
um, not having the eclipse. So, but it is 97 to 99% covered, and you're like, well, that sounds pretty cool. It really isn't. It, it, the sun is still really bright. You'd be surprised how much light 97% of the sun covered up gives off, and you have to have those eclipse glasses. I mean, it'll still be unique. You'll notice something different in the sky, but not nearly as much as a total solar eclipse. So this is what it would look like in Rogers with a partial eclipse. There's a look at the moon covering up the sun. It'd be so disappointing, too, to get that close to seeing it, but just missing it, and then it's, uh, and then it's over. So here's some viewing tips as we look at the uh, 2024 eclipse. The eclipse is going to happen in the early afternoon. That time depends on your location. Make sure you use solar viewing glasses or you're going to damage your eyes. Now there's, there's, a, there's a false, you know, there's a, there's a false uh, conception that they look up at the sun and it's more dangerous during an eclipse than a regular sun. And that's not true. It's just people are looking at the sun a lot more <laughs> during an eclipse because you know, you don't really look at the sun on a regular basis. So that's why it's more dangerous is because people, are, it's not because the light is more focused or anything like that. It's still very dangerous. Also too, if you're going to buy glasses, there are glasses that are not certified. They have to be ISO 12312-2 certified. That is very important. It's called, um, it's called ISO standard um, and it's either European standard or it's an American uh, standard. But either one are going to be okay, but it's got to be ISO certified. Also, this is what you guys are not looking forward to as emergency managers and uh, law enforcement. Uh, go early, prepare for massive traffic delays. How can I tell you that? Because this is a look at the traffic in Missouri. This is after the eclipse. <laughs> and uh, this, is all, this is still during the partial eclipse too, as well. We got out of there and my wife was like, okay, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. You were right, but let's go. And so did everybody else. About a three hour traffic jam. This is in the middle of Missouri and nowhere, by the way. This is in Mocaine, Missouri. And it is one of the highways, but that highway isn't as packed as that is. So if you have a smartphone, you can use Eclipse apps such as a Smithsonian Eclipse, 2024 Eclipse2024.org. Those are all available on iTunes, Google Play Store. Um, if you don't have Eclipse glasses, this is something fun for the kids some safe ways to view the eclipse. You can make what's called a pinhole projector. We talked about this before, it's fun for the kids, but uh, you have a big box. The bigger the box, the bigger the image will be on the other side. You get a little, <laughs> it has to be a perfect circle. If it's not, if you're just like punching a hole in a box, it's, <laughs> you're gonna get what light is coming through there. But what's wild is during an eclipse, the sun will look like a crescent. And not only does it look like a crescent on that object, it'll look like a crescent in between the leaves of trees. If you use um, any type of thing to project that image onto the ground, it'll do the same thing. You can use binoculars. You use the side that you normally look through, not the eyepiece, but it'll project the image onto a piece of paper or a telescope works real well. Now, don't look at the sun with the telescope unless you have a protective lens on it. That would be kind of dangerous. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised if people did that. So use various items to cast the image of the sun. So here's a look at cracker. Um, you've got cracker holes, and you see the little crescents on there. These are all things fun to do during the partial eclipse. There's a look at the, the crescent, sh the shapes and shadows and so it really is kind of weird when you see that see all these little crescents all over the ground so what happens you're like okay well april 8 2024 whatever i'll just wait for the next one next year or a year next or after that the next one it's not until uh over 20 years from now august 12 2045 now there are going to be other eclipses I know, it's like, wow, I saw the eyes open up there. That's a long time. 
who knows what we're going to be in 2045. I don't know. But uh, I do know this. It does go through Fayetteville this time. So people miss this one and they're able to outlive 20 years. Um, that's the eclipse path. In Fort Smith, too. Fort Smith is in the totality, too, on that one. But I don't know. I'd take my odds of trying to see the 2024 one than waiting until 2045. Yeah. But it does slice right through Arkansas. And this is a good one, too. Totality is about six minutes. So it's a long totality. Now, another thing, too, is when I visit, when I saw, I remember as a kid seeing that 91 eclipse, and then I saw the 2017 eclipse, and it didn't get as dark as I remembered. I was like, maybe I was just a kid, I was overexcited, and then, I, and then it hit me. Well, if your totality is longer, that means the moon's shadow is wider. And if the moon's shadow is wider, that means you're going to be shrouded in a bigger area of darkness than what you, what you had in 2017. So that makes sense that it was darker, and it was a lot darker. I remember it being darker in 91. This one that happens in 2024, it's going to be a lot darker than 2017. So yeah, very long totality time, just over six minutes. I still can't believe the totality was six minutes, 55 seconds for that 91 eclipse. That is a very long time. So in closing, a total solar eclipse, it's an event that you just do not want to miss. I hope I made that apparent. I hope I expressed that as much as I could. It's the most amazing thing you'll ever witness. Again, I use my wife as a gauge because I wake her up for everything. I wake her up for, for meteor showers. I, I wake her up for, and she's like, Dan, just don't wake me up anymore, <laughs> okay? It's not that cool. I see like maybe three meteors in an hour, and it's like, that's not enough. And I was like, okay, I, I got you there. But um, I was like, you have to see this total solar eclipse. And she's just like, Dan, you br bring me to everything. We'll go check it out. As soon as that was done, she goes, Dan, you were right. That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Let's plan for 2024. And I was like, all right, I got an eclipse fan now. So if my wife thought it was the most amazing thing, trust me, she does not get easily amused. You will be amazed as well. But we can't stress this enough. It's totality or bust. And then finally, I'm going to end it with this. Expect significant short-term population increases or decreases. This could end up being a big bust for you guys in Arkansas if the cloud cover, obviously, is abundant. Now, those shifts, and, and we don't know. I, I would love to know what the forecast is like for April 8th of this year cloud cover, but that's tough to get 24, 36 hours out sometimes. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting forecast, one that we're going to be watching very, very closely. We can say this, though. Uh, I do have to connect to the internet. Unless, uh, do we know the internet here? The, no. Do you know what you mean? Or should be Wi-Fi. Is, it, is, it, is there a guest? Can we just pop on the guest? Wi-Fi? I actually forgot to do this, but I do want to close with, I want to show you the cloud cover over the years. We go all the way back to two, uh, 1979, and you're going to see it is a basically roll in the dice in terms of if it's cloudy or not. Let's see here. Just the guest Wi-Fi. There we go. Perfect. Sorry I didn't do this ahead of time. I forgot. So let's, uh, let's look at that. This is going to be uh, April 8th, cloud cover over the years. And you're also going to see the path of totality here too as well. Let's get verification. It's going to load up on another page. I will move it over. There we go. And I'll scroll down. So there's the path of totality. We'll go back here and let it start. And you're going to see the date, right? Yeah. Let me shrink this down for you guys a little bit. So you can see the date. All right, so here we go. 96, 86, oh, 87's clear, 88's clear, 89's clear. That's three years in a row. Uh, that wouldn't be good. 
that's not good. 91. I mean, <laughs> this is a little eye-opening because it's like some years, totally clear. Last year was amazing. Last year would be perfect. But imagine this right here. We'd, I'd be a, running for southwest Texas. That would be a nightmare. That looks like a snow event, honestly. That's clear. 2006 was good. 2007, no bueno. 2008, bad. 2009, that's what I'm saying. It's like 50-50, honestly. So we shall see what the cloud cover brings. Be praying. Hopefully it clears up. Hopefully we have a clear day and we don't have to go very far. We can just stay right here. There's 2018, 19. 2020 was great. 21 was good. 22, not so good. And then 23, there's the last year. Last year was amazing. I remember thinking, oh, I hope this, hope this year is like next on April 8th. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions at all uh, for me. But hopefully um, you guys learned a few things about the eclipse. What was the most surprising out of the presentation, like in terms of about eclipses? Yes. Okay. It does. It gets, like I say, it gets really dark and it'll probably get even darker than it was in 2017 for those that experienced it. It really, I'm telling you, it's an amazing thing. It's rare to see. There are people that chase eclipses all around the world because it is such a almost a life-changing experience. It's tough to put into words, but it just kind of really gives you an idea how our Earth and where it is in the solar system and how it's in relation to the moon it's, uh, and the sun. It's, just, it's really cool. Pardon me? Yeah. Um, Russellville has some good infrastructure, obviously. They have a lot of hotels, and so they're going to have to be bringing a lot of people in to stay in the hotel because they're going to be here for several days before the eclipse. Yeah. So I believe that's the reason why, um, because you look at the totality area. Little Rock is, is good, too, but Russellville has a longer totality than, than Little Rock because they're kind of on the edge. Um, it... it it's pretty easy to navigate to because it's right on I-40. But uh, I've heard from some people that are, you know, and uh, you guys could probably provide more insight on this. They will be shutting down. They won't be shutting down I-49, but they're not going to let people just stop on the side of the road to watch the eclipse as it's coming through because, you know, there's going to be some people that try to just stop, and that could cause some mass chaos on traffic. And these are all things to think of. You know, it's kind of like, when you're planning and preparing for Y2K and everybody was doing all that stuff and then it hit and nothing really happened. So I guess the point is prepare for the worst, hope for the best. As emergency managers, as meteorologists, we know exactly how, how we have to do that. But I think that is the reason that Russellville is one of the locations. Now I know a bunch of people that are going to the Big Bend of Texas. And if you looked at the cloud cover, they have a lot better shot than the natural state. Yes. Now, the best place to be is in Mexico, but the cartel might end up making it your last eclipse ever. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Any other questions at all? All right. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to talk to you guys, and uh, thank you so much for having me.
is this going to be a huge tax on, on the water system? I don't believe it will be. Uh, but those guys need to know, hey, it's a tax. And if we're not prepared for it, we got a 24 inch busted line. That creates a problem because we may not be able to get people to that line to get it shut down, to get, to get it closed off, uh, to get it repaired. Those are issues that we have to take into consideration. So you folks that are in those areas, uh, we need to start getting the word out now to the locals, hey, this is, this is going to happen. Yes, we may be dodging tornadoes. Probably <laughs> not, but that's just a possibility that we have to take. But if we don't prepare for it, what happens to us? We get egg on our face, right? It makes us look bad because we're, we're in those leadership roles of, hey, we're trying to prepare you for this. Uh, Josh with EMS runs the RIMS team. And you know what he said at one of the meetings? He said, we may prepare for this and do all this, and it may be a no burden, but at least we prepared for it. And it turned out to be nothing. Or we don't prepare for it and we end up with mass chaos because we don't have a plan. We're not ready. Uh, I've raised my entire family for 30 years on the analogy that it's better to have it not needed than need it not have it. So that's kind of the way we have to look at this whole scenario. We have a plan. Let's get a plan together and let's work toward making sure that we can facilitate that plan as opposed to, oh crap, now what do we do? So that's, that's the whole issue with, with all these meetings. I know they're time consuming, I know they're pain in the butt, but like I said, you got to have a plan in place uh, because you got six ambulances on the road currently. Now, you, does anybody in here outside of myself know how many, how many miles does the Fort County cover? There's 1,690 square miles in Fort County. So, and you have six ambulances to cover all that. How many, how many, how many, how many minutes through the course of a 24 hour period do you think that those ambulances are on the road going to, going to a call? Not very many. We're not, we don't have the capabilities. We don't have, we have a few fire departments that run EMRs, uh, not very many. And those numbers are going dwindling every year. They get lower and lower and lower. So, yeah. but that's, that, that's an issue that we have to address now as opposed to waiting. And they're doing a great job. Uh, Region 5 uh, with the EMS, they've been working on this in September. 2023 is when they started. Uh, McCurtain County started doing all this stuff in early 2023. I heard about this in February 2023 in Sebastian County, Arkansas. They started talking about it then. I kind of started talking about it then too, but I was kind of laughing at it because they thought it was a big joke. And I'm telling you, it's, it, if cloud cover doesn't happen, it's going to be a huge deal. So, with that being said, how many people in here have used Google as a means of travel? When you get in your car and you know you're going to some place that you're not familiar with, oh, I'll just put it into Google and it'll take you there. Okay? So, if you're, if you're familiar with Google, if you're familiar with Bing, if you're familiar with Hong Kong, any of those, any of those internet based mapping systems, what happens whenever a wreck happens in front of you? direction that you're going, nine times out of ten, with today's technology, it will reroute you. So what happens when a traffic jam happens on 259? It's going to reroute that traffic to get them to the destination they've typed in into their, into their GPS location and they want to go. So that's the four skies that with us today. So yes, I understand that there is lots of national forest roads down there. Most of those are put into Google with the type of vehicle that you have to have to travel that location. 
my worry is once those roads get impacted and they get log jammed, is Google going to say, rain on those, we've got to get this person to this location and this is going to be the best route. Well, I have a Ford F-250 sitting out here in the parking lot and I can tell you, there's a lot of those roads, I hate driving that truck down. Yes, it's a full wheel drive. <laughs> it's a big truck. But I'm telling you, if it wasn't for that truck, you're not driving your Prius down those, down those roads. You're not driving your Honda City down those roads. Uh, the state guys over here from, from the state of Oklahoma Virgin Mini that are here, they drive a Chevy Equinox. That car, not making it down those roads. That's just reality. So what happens when their car gets the oil pan ripped off? And there's no cell service. You ever been on the South End of this county? There ain't no cell service. In fact, I can take you to a place today that if you have a satellite phone, you can't call out. You know why? Because satellite can't reach you. It's underneath the mountain. It's too close to the mountain. And you cannot find it. You cannot locate it. That the FBI agent's laughing at me, trying to tell me, oh, yeah, I can get out. I had a satellite phone. I said, go ahead and try it. <laughs> he was frustrated because it wouldn't work. So, anyway, but yes, those things, those things can and it will happen in our county if we're not prepared for it. So I'm glad the truth was here today. I appreciate you guys coming. I know you guys kind of have a plan on what you're going to do. Um, so, and how that's going to work. I wish, I tried to get old dog to come today, but all they had was representatives, and I, I, I need somebody that can make a decision. I can say that. We need folks here that have the ability to say, okay, how can I do that? Let me do this. So, anyway, if you have questions, are they going to be shut down some of our national forests? They can't close any of those roads. Correct? That's <coughs> correct. Because those are state, or those are taxpayer funded roads. So, it's not like the dog goes off and not going to close. As long as it's still <coughs> made an open road, yes. it, it cannot be closed. Unless it is. But it must have been around Valentine's Day. Yes, it was. <laughs>
Yeah, it's not as bad before the eclipse because everybody's in different spots, but then they take those main thoroughfares and they take those main roads all at the same time coming from all different directions. That's when, you know, people come out of the woodwork, essentially. Yeah. A lot of the people that are the other side, the people that are going to be here for two, three days, they're going to be here. The drive ins are the ones that are going to be the problem. Those are Salt Lake City, Little Rock, or whatever, you know, not what they're doing, but they're going to drive in the Palatine area to stay up and live close to the front side. They're going to cause problems with the drive too, mm -hmm. and it's going to back up probably the drive too. Getting into the Yeah. Area. more questions? Anything I can try to answer? Hey Dennis, do you have a draft response plan coming up at this point? Or? No sir, I do not, not currently. Do you have a time frame when you expect to have something out? Ready? I, I'm hoping that we'll have that get to that by the, the 7th Yeah. 
Some of the local nurses volunteer time is being played how many to drive uh, strategic points around because they would be closer to something happening. Yeah, that's one of the so we have an operations planning group and that would be more of a uh, question for Kenny. Uh, yeah. We actually are setting up cogs. Wow, it's just like my wife sent me a text. <clears throat> she just said the she said the waterfall is not going in our pool, so it looks like maybe things froze up unfortunately. Okay.
I'll just, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be leaving here pretty soon. 